Wild Thing by Jules Denby Prologue Once upon a time, long ago and far away, I had everything you're supposed to want. All the stuff they tell you about on the telly and in the celeb mags. The lifestyle you're supposed to die for. I had a good job at a major record company, a bijou loft apartment in London, the parties, the clothes, the gorgeous rock star boyfriend, the cocaine, the champagne, the permanent guest list at the kind of clubs that pissed up silicone sculpted glamour models are paparazzied leaving with a Premier League footballer in tow and without their knickers. The Brit Awards. AAA passes to everything, from unsigned band nights at some tiny hip club to the pyramid stage at Glastonbury and the Stones' honest-to-God final goodbye concert at Wembley. All four nights. I had invites to everything. The OK wedding of a whippet-sized chart-topping popstrel and her thicko backing dancer fiancé. The openings of the hottest new bars, clubs, galleries, boutiques. Oh, you name it. I turned it down because I couldn't be arsed. Or I went and made out like I was bored stiff, which mostly I was, celeb culture not being all that in actuality. All of it. I had all of it and more. Jesus, <laughs> the tales I could tell. Not that anyone would believe me because they wouldn't be about how great it all was and what fascinating and worthwhile people, boy bands, pop whores and rock musicians are. Or MPs, newscasters, actors and celebrity chefs either for that matter. Those stories wouldn't tow the party line, boost the media profile you see. <laughs> Christ, far from it. Like, remember that MP? The one who was on the box all the time saying how Britain should return to a state of decency and Christian principles. Him with the blonde hair and the fat red face. Yeah, you know. I once saw him at a party, stark naked on all fours on a dining table, coked off his tits, eating, well, yeah, <laughs> not the entrees anyway. People were cheering him on while they shook bottles of moe and sprayed him and his dinner with them. Cool, eh? Right. Oh, once upon a time. I'd never have named the names. It was a point of honour. But honour is an expensive luxury when so much is at stake. Oh, God, I, I never, ever wanted this. I, I didn't. I prided myself on being discreet, being dependable, being the sealed repository of so many, many secrets. But sometimes, like they say, you have to do what you have to do. I've got someone else to think of now, not just myself. Yeah, 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 maybe I'm just being oversensitive. The likes of those tossers get theirs one way or another, whatever. But I bet they never thought it would come from the likes of me. I'm a weapon now. I've pulled the trigger, pressed the button, loosed the arrow. It's all chaos now. Oh, Jesus, it's, it's so cold here. Freezing, I'm, I'm freezing. What the fuck have I done? What possessed me to bring it all to this? God in heaven, what have I done? I, I thought I was right, you know. I was, I was so convinced, so completely sure I was right. I thought I was doing the decent thing, being stand-up, a real heroine. But it's such a mess. Such a fucking mess. And Wild Thing is out there on the frost-silvered black hillside. I know what he'll look like. I've watched him so many times before. He'll be a dark shape, cut out of the icy ground and the sharp diamond glitter of the freezing stars. Sinuous, silent, full of power. A shadow moving this way like thunder creeping over the horizon. You'd never spot him if you didn't know how to look for him. But I know. I know. He's on his way home. He loves me. <laughs>